Hello everyone. Today we are going to be checking out our relief landscape plate for our ceramics class. Depth is going to be the main element that is being used in this assignment. A photo reference is not only suggested, it is required for this project so we can refer back to it. Layering is going to be a major, major use of our uh, clay for this project. And while the minimum requirement for this project is six inches by eight inches, I actually heavily suggest going bigger because it does actually make it easier for this project. Now, looking at some examples, we have this wonderful non-glazed one, but a lighthouse across the ocean. We have some rocks and grass in the front. Uh, here we have the woods at night. It seems like it's at night, but a beautiful nature landscape. And the next one we're going to have is another lighthouse with a cool little dock in it with wonderful glaze. And I love the frame that's going around it. But the main thing that we can see is that we have layers going into this. And this is where we get into depth for this project. Now, depth in art refers to the perceived distance between the background and the foreground of the composition. We can even get middle ground into this, uh, into our pieces and everything as well. But I really want you guys to think about the layers that a piece could have within this project. Uh, you know, think about a place that you actually want to do for this project, not just the first landscape that pops up. For me, I went with the college that I attended, which was California State University Chico. This is one of the front buildings. And this was my initial plan for this project. You know, and here I have my rolling pin, my guideline sticks, some carving tools, my palette knife, and I actually took out three big chunks of clay first. So before, you know, I, I, I know I'm already gonna have layers into this project. Uh, so what I'm going to actually set up are pre-rolled out layers for myself so I can have pretty consistent thickness throughout the piece. And you see that I actually have a sketch first. Uh, I sketched it out and while well, six inches by eight inches is the, the minimum requirement for this project, I'm actually gonna make mine this paper size. This is eight and a half by 10 inches, a standard copy uh, print paper for this project. And right now I'm using the guide sticks to roll out to kind of give me the same consistent thickness. And now I could already tell that I should have actually got more clay. And if my clay was harder, I would have preferred to wedge everything together and kind of start all over, which is a bigger chunk of clay. But the clay that I have is really, really fresh. It's so fresh to the point to where even me just having this rolling pin and going over is actually going to push it together and, and actually make it smooth and not have any air pockets. You do have to worry that if you do have, you know, not leather hard clay, but even just a little bit harder clay, uh, you do have to worry about air pockets being stuck in there and, you know, it not correcting correctly. So that's when wedging is going to come into place. But for this clay, since it is so fresh, it actually does work well and, and is getting all the air pockets out when I'm just putting them together and using the rolling pin to, to get it all in there. Um, but this is the first layer for this project. You know, I'm, I'm measuring up to the paper size. Once I'm okay with it, I'm actually gonna go through and I'm just gonna cut it into this nice, you know, rectangle uh, to start off with. And I understand that this is going to be my, my furthest back layer. So this first piece that I'm doing is actually gonna be my furthest layer. This is going to be where the building, the sky, maybe some trees and everything are going to go into this. But I'm kind of working from the back forward. And this is really where that depth comes into play. Uh, right now I'm moving the clay to the side because I'm going to get ready for my next layer. And I'm really just going to use this next layer as like the building block to things I see in the middle ground or even in the foreground. So keep this kind of stuff in mind. We really, really want to push depth in this. And you can even look at this example. This is a cardboard uh, relief, but it's, it's able to kind of show a little bit easier the layers that can go into a piece to where that tree is going to be in the foreground, those mounds in the sky in the background, middle ground, looks like that kind of river, those trees, you know, a little bit of that land in there too. So, you know, that's kind of uh, an easier way to see this uh, compared to just looking at the, the real life example of Chico State 
uh, front building and everything. And this is where kind of in my mind, I'm, I'm already trying to break this stuff down. Uh, in my mind, I'm already trying to think what's all the way in the back, what could be in the middle, and what's going to be in the front. I don't need these to be even closer as big as my final piece. You can see that the paper is, is definitely bigger. Uh, but I'm able to get the length there. I'm able to kind of see like top and bottom and everything. And I have nice consistent thickness that I use with the guideline sticks. Uh, I wedge some of that clay pretty quick next to one another. Uh, just so I can kind of have like a consistent uh, clay ball to get to go with. And right here, I'm making another layer. Because during this, I'm constantly thinking, again, it's that depth. And I want to constantly think background foreground which means the thing that's in the most front and even middle ground now for my drawing there's not an insane amount of uh pieces that that are really in the front if we look back to the original reference photo actually really the only main thing that's in the front is kind of that front sign that says california state university chico my middle ground is going to be more or less those kind of like bigger bushes, possibly that tree that's on the left side. You know, some of those street lights and everything I put in the middle ground. And then we get the big building in the background. So I'm getting my layers, kind of pointing out here to where, you know, what the main one's going to be. Uh, have those other ones that are off to the side and everything. And those are going to be just helpful so I can kind of keep that same consistency and, and get that going across the entire piece. Now, this is a part that proved to be super, super helpful of having it already sketched out on the size of paper that uh, the final piece is going to be on. What I ended up doing is I actually took one of my like wood carving tools that so doesn't have like a super hard edge and actually just went through and, you know, with pretty soft to, to kind of like soft medium pressure, actually just pushed onto the paper and I was able to get a pretty nice, you know, fainter outline to this. You can kind of see it. I brought it up closer to uh, the camera to make sure you guys can see it, but you can clearly see it even uh, on the video when it's sitting down. Uh, and then I was able to kind of go around and actually push in significantly deeper and really kind of get the, the placement of everything and, and smooth things out where I want it to be smooth. But that proved to be such a huge time saver for myself. And this is why having a reference photo, doing, you know, even a, a rough draft sketch of figuring out kind of like placement and where things are going, super, super helpful. Now, right now is the time to where I'm actually trying to figure out and I'm, and I'm getting down that depth of layer that I could really actually get into this. You could have made an argument and just said, I'm going to use these three layers. The sky and the building are on one layer. The middle layers can be the trees and the bushes and everything. Uh, but if we have the thickness of the clay, I'm going to use this to my advantage. I'm going to actually add like more depth into my piece. So what I did, because I know that building is going to take up so much of that, uh, you know, first layer that we do have, I actually use one of the nice carving tools, uh, a nice ribbon tool. And I use that just to carve away about half of the thickness of the clay that's behind the building. And that's going to act as the sky. And it's nice because now it's going to allow that building to stand out. It's going to let that uh, the sky kind of sink back even further into the background. And even on this, just being one rolled out piece of clay, we're now getting you know a lot more depth into this piece. Um, I'm going around here right now and I'm, I'm getting just kind of like simple placement of things. You know, I'm getting there's there's a bunch of windows in the building. There's a really cool kind of like circular window that has uh, the logo Chico State and that that top center of it. Um, you know, I, I'm not getting to the arches uh, yet. And, you know, right now, this is just something where I'm just kind of getting basic placement down. But you can see also to where if it's an area that I can show off a little bit more. I'm going to show it off. And this is something where, again, just kind of going in and carving out where the windows are really helps just give this, again, this pretty flat piece of clay that we had uh, a lot more depth. And again, I I keep on coming back to this little cardboard example that we have because I think it's just such a nice way to kind of look and view of how to like break this stuff down of what can be in front, 
what can be in back for you guys and uh, to be able to kind of build from that. So even right now I'm going through, I'm checking out these windows, I'm, I'm carving into them. And even though it's probably going the same amount of depth down that the sky has, the fact that it's on the building uh, makes it seem like we now have like three different layers. It makes it seem like we have building, we have windows, and then we have the sky. So it's a nice little easy thing to where again, we're, we're still just on that first layer of this clay and we already have three seemingly three uh, layers of depth. Right now I'm doing something where I, I would tend to usually actually work from the back forward. I would go all the way from the background. I'd hit the middle ground. Then I'd get the thing in the front, but with, only one thing really being in the front of uh, with that being the sign. I thought this was a pretty obtainable thing to get done. You could see that I did the same thing that I did with the building. I, I used my sketch, which was again, so extremely helpful for me to get down. Uh, but I used my sketch uh, layout of, of the drawing and I was able to kind of go in there, get the measurements all correct, pop the piece out for the sign. And I'm going to now score this piece on. You can see my little wagging of the finger there because I get so many people that kind of lightly try and score their pieces. And we don't want that. We want nice big score marks. We want to make sure like this thing is like a tire. And I want uh, really big marks. We can think about this like tread. We want grip for these pieces when we put them together. So I did it on both sides, on the main plate, then on the sign, got it wet. And I'm placing these things together and you can actually see if you really, if you have this large, but on all the sides, you'll see when I kind of move the sides around, there's a lot of air bubbles popping out. That's what we want to see. We want to see air bubbles because what that means is that the water and the clay are pushing those uh, little air pockets out that we made with those treads. Uh, so it's getting a really, really nice seal. When we see air, air bubbles come out, we want to keep on pressing until we don't see them anymore. But it's a really nice sign that we are actually getting a really good attachment there. Um, so I have my sign up there and now I'm going to actually work with these bushes. And what I found is that my paper was actually getting really wet. It was, it was starting to actually tear right here and something actually really worked out, which I, I didn't really know if this was going to work out instead of tracing over it nice and smooth. I kind of went over it almost like a, like a tattoo gun. I just kept on like, kind of like poking the little areas and I just poked all around it. And as you can see, those bushes actually were very, very easy to, to see, to get the placement of and everything, and generally just get the layout here. And I wanted to go with these bushes because they're, they are the ones that are going to be going around the sign. There's some layering that we're gonna be able to do with this, and I'm kind of just getting like the sections mapped out here for these bushes to what's gonna be more in front, what's gonna be more in the back and everything too. Uh, but you can see I'm just kind of trying to figure out this fitment right here put the the sketch back up so we can be able to kind of like mimic that and everything as well too and again we're going for the scoring uh big big general marks i want to make sure this thing is is sealing on and, and gripping on and a lot of teachers like to use slip and slip is like really really watered down clay and while i think it does have a, a place in ceramics it's it's obviously very helpful to many people uh, for things like this, especially if you have really nice wet clay, I don't think it's really needed. Uh, for me personally, I think if you are scoring and if you're getting the clay wet enough to begin with, uh, it should be able to create that slip kind of automatically. Um, so so I'm not a big uh, proponent and, and I don't think you should push using slip that much in the class. Uh, I think it can also kind of like develop like bad habits for people to be a little dependent on it. And more often than not, I see people use slip on products and projects that are getting to that leather hard stage. And we get a lot of cracking going on when you have something super wet like slip versus something that's leather hard. They, they dry at a different rate and they end up just splitting anyway. So it, it kind of, a lot of people kind of use it as a crutch and it ends up messing them up even more. So I'd rather us get down, really be able to attach something without that first. Now, 
I talked about layering and, and really getting this process in and you can see to where the bushes initially were kind of were weren't just kind of they were at the same level as that sign that was in the front and a lot of this that I was going through was carving out and really actually trying to make that sign stand out more and still giving the the bushes you know a little bit more depth compared to the building behind it but also having that separation from the sign so I kind of actually carved a little bit more on the bottom side of the bushes and then I kind of started going through and separating part, uh, pieces out. Uh, here, let's see, what am I doing here? Oh, I'm getting the street light here. So a little street lamp that's going to go in front of the bushes. Uh, I do wish I'd, I kind of wish I had these flipped around to where the, the main piece was actually lower and that big slab with the sketch on it was on the top part. But it is what it is. Uh, so I'm getting the street light here, you know, I'm getting general things down and, and we're not going to see this entire piece get done during this period. Uh, sorry, during this video, but we're seeing the process and how to build this stuff up, you know, again, to where I kind of went through, you can see right here, I'm pushing the clay on the street light. So that sign that's in the front can actually stand out more. So now we actually have sign in front, street light just behind it. And since I carved out that base part of the bushes and everything too, those bushes are uh, appearing to be further back than the street light. So now I have layer one with the sign, two with the lamp, three with the bushes, four with the building, five with the windows, and six with the sky. So just right now, and we're still, I mean, not even halfway through, we're, we're getting, you know, right now there's gonna be a bush on in front of the buildings. We still have to get trees. There's a second lamp on there. Uh, unfortunately for myself, I chose a brick building out of all things. So I still have to worry about texture and everything too. And before this video really wraps up, that's probably one of the bigger things I want to talk to you guys about is that getting the layout of a pretty general landscape isn't the most complex thing. But going through and adding texture into this is really what helps starting uh, start to like separate it out too. I'm going to have a brick building. I'm going to have, you know, the, the leafiness of bushes. I'm going to have a brick sign in front and the metal of the light pole and then grass. I mean, then the sky, it all really, really changes up. And, you know, if I just stopped right here, I want to be satisfied. And, you know, throughout this process, we can look at some really nice examples too, to where, you know, we had this cabin here, or we can look at another cabin and everything, but texture is such an important part when it comes to these pieces of really being able to see just how it layers into the entire piece, uh, how we're going to like connect this stuff overall, and really how we're able to be able to like separate these pieces from one another and, uh, and you know, from these areas from the back to the middle ground, to the foreground, everything too. So coming back to this piece, you know, I'm starting to get, they lay out here. I'm starting to, to really kind of see like where these little things can get placed. I want to get, you know, bushes in there. I mean, we're, I'm still very, very far from calling this complete. Uh, right now you can see that I'm actually putting like a little bush that's on that front sign. Uh, nice, like small little details to get in there and everything too. But really, this is the time where I'm going to actually start kind of like winding down on on this section. Uh, you know, I, I still have so much more to do. I still have to get the arches in the buildings. I have to get that tall tree that's right next to the building. There, there's actually two tall trees on the left side. Uh, you know, I'm adding another bush that's in here, too. So we're going to have, you know, a few more layers and everything as well. But, you know, a lot of this I'm, I'm putting in cool little detail now like into the bushes and this is where like texture starts coming in i'm starting to add kind of like a fluffiness into uh the bushes there you know I, I can clean up and start putting down like a little bit more like sign detail as well and this again is just the beginning stages of it uh you know i, I was kind of getting not upset with myself but i was like oh of course i had to choose out of all the landscapes the one with the brick building and grass and bushes and a brick sign and tree and sky and are there clouds and windows you know there's so many little texture pieces here that it, it might seem a little overwhelming uh but it's doable and it's manageable 
you know, you can see right here, I'm kind of going into these bushes. It's nothing really, really crazy detail, but I'm just adding in, you know, little marks and a little bit of fluff into it and everything to just kind of separate it again from the other things that are going to be going around this scene. And as much of an importance it is to get placement of objects down, finding ways to separate these areas is going to be really, really important. Uh, you know, I was able to get this, I, I, I would say this is probably halfway, if not three quarters of the way. This took me about 50 minutes total. There's still a lot more I have to do in this landscape, but that layout took 50 minutes. The texture is going to probably take another 50 minutes altogether once everything's kind of like built and put together. And then probably the biggest thing with this project is the glaze job. Uh, glazing is always going to be an important process to this piece. But really with this project, you know, getting the colors to, to look correct, blending, uh, having colors that can separate. You know, I don't want to just go in here with basic kind of like primary colors. I want these things to look as realistic as possible and have them generally stand out from one another. I did just add in, there's like a little pathway that comes uh, through those bushes and everything. So I was adding in that pathway. Sort of add in a little bit more texture and everything too. But this is a really solid start and beginning to this project. And I hope I was able to answer a lot of questions for you guys, or at least show, you know, how to really start these type of projects out. And, you know, by any means, let me know if you have any questions. But this was an intro video for our relief landscape plate. Thanks for sticking with me. All right. Bye, guys.